Aviation analytics firm Sirium says global airline capacity is set to finally surpass its corresponding 2019 levels this week. That would be a major milestone in the recovery from the COVID pandemic that forced airlines to park their fleets. This also comes as China's Golden Week holiday wrapped up. The nation recorded 826 million domestic trips over the eight-day break, although Chinese travellers remained hesitant to embark on overseas trips. While the travel rebound is good news for the airline industry, it's not going to help global decarbonisation efforts. Let's discuss that side of the equation with BNEF oil analyst Wayne Tan. So, Wayne, the China sort of aviation industry recovery story, how strong has it been so far? So China's domestic air travel has already surpassed 2019 levels by about 15% year to date. Um, during the Golden Week period, uh, the number of trips that was being made was about 6% higher than what was seen in 2019, although most of those trips were actually domestic trips. Now, for international air travel, although its recovery has been very robust despite the country's economic headwinds, it's still around half of what we, it was uh, in 2019. Um, and international trip on average consumes about 10 times more jet fuel demand than a domestic trip. So overall, that means that the country's jet fuel demand this year is still below 2019 levels. Now, we expect uh, that the world as a whole would take at least another couple of years to reach pre-pandemic levels. Now, on the side point about uh, the Middle East conflict, uh, we do not think uh, that it will have a material impact on global jet fuel demand. Uh, it's more of a supply story there. So let's talk a little bit more about decarbonization when it comes to oil refiners because they operate on very tight margins. What are the options uh, in order to decarbonize an oil refinery in China? Um, now, if we were, when we will consider the options to decarbonize a refinery, there are two key factors to, to think about, and that is the specific refinery process that you want to decarbonize. And the second is where the refinery is located. I'll, I'll focus on the former. So, um, in, in generally speaking, uh, there are different refinery uh, processes have different emissions intensities. Uh, but we've identified five processes which makes up for a bulk of those emissions. And they are uh, crude distillation, cracking, uh, hydrogen production, direct heat and utility. So processes which requires a lot, a lot of uh, heat, such as crude distillation and cracking, uh, an electric boiler can be used instead of fossil fuels. Processes which uh, has a sufficiently large and concentrated stream of carbon emissions, uh, such as hydrogen production or even cracking, carbon capture can be used. Uh, the electricity used in the support of refinery operations, such as to keep the lights on, can be substituted with renewable power. Now, I've listed some options to decarbonize a refinery, but how refiners actually prioritize those options uh, depend a lot on where the refinery is located because the location of the refinery drives the cost of, uh, the, cost of the incumbent fuel, uh, the low carbon alternative and policy incentives.